my heritage is an Igbo, um, which is a cultural group in Nigeria. Um, I was born as part of the diaspora, um, but I am as connected to my Igbo and Nigerian heritages as I can be. Um, second thing is my lifelong love and passion for craft. Um, I've sewn and knit since I was a child, um, whilst also doing other crafts such as needlework and uh, macrame. Uh, at the moment, I am a multimedia textile and fiber artist and photographer, um, mainly, uh, where my creative practice consists of garment sewing, quilting, spinning fibers, collage, and photography. And the third thing is I really have a love of research and exploring different types of knowledges. Um, I'm a trained sociologist, but I've always been a critical about what counts as knowledge and why some knowledges are viewed as more legitimate than others. Um, so creating what I think is an artificial hierarchy of what is not, what is knowledge or what is knowable and how it is justified ultimately uh, marginalizes cultures and societies, which is really unfortunate. Um, so I was curious to combine these three things during the Community Action Research Project um, and examine my cultural heritage through the Horniman Collection and use various approaches to collect and consider data to begin to understand unrepresented craft histories in Nigeria and see where the research would take me. I think the main barrier for my work specifically was and is the relative lack of objects in the collection, as well as the wider documentation on my research or on my topics of interest. Um, for example, my starting place for my community action research project was this Igbo hat um, called Akpu Agu. Um, I almost took for granted that it would be in the Horniman collection um, at first because of how ubiquitous it has become in popular Igbo and even West African culture but it wasn't there. So I had to shift my investigations um, more broadly from the start. Um, but also at least to date, I haven't ha I, I've had trouble finding written documentation um, on the history of Akpuagu and the limited oral history that I've heard um, thus far has been very limited. Um, so the research continues, but that's half the fun. Um, other challenges have also been around documentation um, such as the inconsistent spelling of Ebo, for example, I-B-O or E-B-O, um, which are left over from the colonial legacies of imposing English transliterations on Ebo sounds that don't exist in the English language, the B, um, uh, the G-B. Um, another is misinformation, which can be linked to the dangers of a single story, um, especially when that story is not one's to tell or one might not be the best person to tell it, um, especially historically, um, but even still somewhat today, we see this commonly in research about so-called others, um, when actuality, if we are to use those terms, it's actually the outsider research who is the other. Um, and I suppose one last thing that I'd mention following on from that is the framing of objects and photographs, um, which I used in my project as, um, as for my work, they only showed literally a snapshot of craft in action rather than revealing the whole story. Um, similarly, the narratives that accompanied the objects and photographs um, are singular, and in my case, exclusive from an, exclusively from an outsider perspective, where this connection to cultural knowledge was not existent. Um, so um, kind of all those things are, are, they're kind of interrelated, but that was those, I guess those were kind of the things that were, um, were kind of challenges for me. I think I really had to challenge older imperial and colonial mindsets explicitly in my work and start thinking about the insider outsider dynamic and what that and what the practical repercussions are um, for that. Um, so while looking at objects firmly fixed in the past, akin to artifacts, really, like the photographs that I have from a certain time period and the objects um, and the objects that are kind of. Well, again, kind of fixed in that and that's. Uh, time period. Um, there's only really limited information that I can add now to contextualize the story from then. Um, but what I can bring in um, to make the story contemporary is thinking around the objects in a way to illuminate different ways of thinking about the objects and the past and, and how we talk about it and maybe how we bring it forward to the future. Um, Rethinking how I take in research um, narratives and data, really, especially when um, it's interpreted from an outsider perspective, 
Uh, much of Western academic research in my field and ones close to it are starting to examine these like standard practices much more, but there's still a significant remnant of hierarchical uh, academia and preferred knowledges or ways of proving knowledge um, that still need to be identified and counteracted. Um, really to allow for greater diversity of knowledges being allowed in um, and considered uh, when, I guess, we're trying to figure out how to how people understand the world and each other. So bringing my, um, my interests from the Community Action Research Project into my academic research is really what's next. Um, especially from this work, um, I've been thinking a lot about story work and the importance of stories and storytelling, um, particularly in marginalized um, communities and um, with my specific interests on the Black diaspora, um, it, it's just something that's really sparked an interest in me um, from the Nigerian perspective, as well as the U.S. perspective, which is where I was born and raised, and in the U.K. perspective, which is where I now live. Um, so specifically, um, I've been looking at story work and quilts from the Black community um, and our communities and looking at how quilting has been used as a method and vehicle for storytelling, for keeping records, for um, taking records, um, commemorating events that are important for families, um, passing down cultural knowledge, uh, transferring craft knowledge, and um, also just creating spaces for community communication and um, intergenerational spaces. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what's next is looking into putting quilts from the US, UK, and hopefully Nigerian context together in conversation with each other just to see how um, Black quilting kind of operates within the Black diaspora.